congratulations if you click this video it's probably because you are going to be a first year teacher clap it up clap it up clap it up for yourself congratulations you are employed you probably also clicked on this video because you need some advice it's your first year and you don't know what to do you may be scared nervous confused don't know where to begin girl or guy the feeling is normal okay that's a very common feeling <laughs> you gonna find out your girl redundant because normal and very common are the same thing i just didn't know how to end that sentence i can pick you up when you're heading down when it all just sucks i'll be your charlie brown what it do eminem crew welcome back to my channel marigold magic in today's video i will be giving you all of my tips and tricks on how to survive and thrive as a first year teacher. If you are new to my channel, my name is Farron Brevet and I'm a seventh grade math teacher in the state of Florida. I have 14 tips. Don't ask me why I got that number. Your girl was trying to do 10, but I didn't want to leave the four out. I didn't want to leave them out because you know they're solid tips. They're solid and you need to hear them. Tip number one, find your marigold. That's right, this is tip number one because you know, this is marigold magic. So you need to know what a marigold is and why you need to find one so let me explain myself to you when i first got to my current teaching position it gave us a article to read called find your marigold i'm telling you this article changed my life so much so i have a whole youtube channel called marigold magic i'm going to link the article in the description box below so you guys can enjoy the full article and just get a lot out of it but for the length of this video and to save your time i'm going to read just a small paragraph so i can further explain why it's so important to find your marigold ready many experienced gardeners follow a concept called companion planting that's when you place certain vegetables or plants near each other in order to improve growth among companion plants, the marigold is one of the best. It protects a wide variety of plants from pests and harmful weeds. If you plant a marigold beside most any garden vegetable, that vegetable will grow big and strong and healthy, protected and encouraged by its marigold. You see, just like in gardening, it's very important to surround yourself with good people to make it in the career of education. I'm telling you, teaching is hard. And to do it by yourself, I don't think I could have done it. <laughs> I, the Lord knows my struggle. And thankfully, I have seven marigolds. That means I have seven people to turn to on a bad day. Because let me tell you something, you do not want to turn to the wrong person. If you turn to something other than a companion plant, because you know, in gardening, if you place a plant next to something that's not a companion plant and that will help it grow, those two plants will actually compete against one another and end up killing the other plants so that it could thrive. It kills it to thrive instead of being a companion plant or a marigold and thrive together. What's with the competition? Minano, I don't get it. You will need someone to vent to that will actually help you improve instead of someone who, there's a difference between someone you can vent to and they won't say nothing. Which means they won't say nothing to admin, they won't say nothing to other teachers, but they won't say nothing to you either. You need someone who will help you grow. They will be there to tell you, hey, that's probably not the best thing you should have done. You can cry on my shoulder, I understand this is a hard time. This is what we can do to make you better. This is what we can do to make your lesson plan better. A marigold is someone, like the article says, will help you grow big and strong, protected and encouraged. That's all I gotta say. Tip two, ask for help. Do not be afraid to ask for help. Remember, every single teacher, every single one has had a first day. They know what you're going through. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be too proud to ask for help. You will need it. And if you go and ask the right teachers, they will want to help you, no question, no nothing. Because why? They're probably a marigold. If you find someone to ask you for help and they give you all their time, that's your marigold, hold on to that one. If you ask someone a question and they are trying to embarrass you because of your question, or they give you this thank I like, really, you don't know that? 
run away, run away fast. That is not someone you want to get your answers from. That is not someone who will be a marigold. And the article about finding a marigold talks all about walnut trees and how if you place a plant next to a walnut tree, that plant will die because walnut trees give off a toxic substance that will inhibit growth. Those traits come in people too. If you ask someone a question and they don't wanna help you, they're inhibiting your growth. And at the end of the day, if they don't wanna help you, they don't care about the kids. Why are you not helping a brand new teacher when they gotta educate the future? Why? Beware of walnut trees. Ask for help, anything. Any question you have, ask someone. And if you've already found your marigolds, ask that person. Your marigolds will be more than happy to help you with anything you need. Like I tell my kids, there's no such thing as a dumb question. And if you're too scared at the moment when you wanna think about asking that question, just imagine me in your ear. Ask the question, just ask it. You need the answer. Tip number three, protect your positivity. Don't eat your lunch in the teacher's lounge. Trust me, you will not find a marigold in there. All them teachers do is complain. If you gotta eat your lunch in your classroom, do it. If you gotta eat your lunch in your marigold's classroom, do it. If you gotta eat your lunch in your car, do it. Do not be around them teachers who like to complain, drag down the children, drag down the admin, drag down other teachers, drag down your positivity. All your kids will know when you do not have a positive mindset. How you present yourself in front of the kids, I'm telling you that positivity will help them want to grow. And you can't be marigolds if you're not positive. Next tip. This tip is going to help you with your positivity. Don't compare yourself to anyone. Don't compare yourself to the new teacher down the hall that seems like they have their life together. Don't compare yourself to the veteran teacher who've been working there for 15 years because guess what? They've been working there for 15 years. It is not fair to compare your beginning to someone else's middle. That's a quote by, um, hold on, let me Google it. John, John Acuff said that. Don't compare your beginning to someone else's middle. It is not fair. It's not fair because they have had all this time to work on themselves and you are just beginning. You are brand new. Don't compare. And when I also say don't compare yourself to other teachers, I mean Pinterest teachers too. Them teachers that post themselves on the internet, when they post their classroom, guess what? They post the their best picture. You think that they're gonna post a picture in their classroom when it's a mess? I think not. Yes, granted, I want you to go out there and Follow those teachers, follow their classroom beauty, follow their behavior structure, follow their lesson plans, follow them, but do not compare yourself to them. Use them as a form of inspiration. Inspire to be like them, but do not compare yourself. Remember, you are brand new. Brand new. Brand new. Brand new. You are not going to have the perfect classroom. You are not going to have the perfect lessons you're not gonna have it you're not because you are brand new this is day one you haven't even set foot in your classroom yet do not compare yourself to teachers who have been in the classroom 15 years you don't know what their classroom looked like day one because they're not gonna post that you will earn the money to spend on your classroom later you will develop the skill to perfect your lesson plan later you will build your classroom management to a phenomenal position later. You will get there, I promise. Which leads to tip number five. Trust the process. Now, I love this tip. I still tell myself this all of the time. Don't give up. Because yes, that first week you step into your school and they throw in all these acronyms at you. IEP, PBO, SEL. You're like, what the heck is going on? Trust the process. That means that it's gonna be hard right now, but it will get better. You will need to fail forward. Each failure is a stepping stool to success. Remember that you're going into your first year of teaching. Eventually it'll be your second, your third, your fourth, your fifth, your sixth, your 29th year of teaching. Trust the process. By year 29, you're gonna be the best teacher out there. Especially if you're out here on YouTube trying to find out ways to survive as a teacher. I know that's what you typed into the search box, okay? If you are taking the time to watch videos like this, you will succeed because you are taking the time to work on yourself and to grow already and you're not even in the classroom yet amen to you shout out to you
because you don't have to watch my video please watch it finish it to the end but you don't have to you do not have to take the time to search and google on how to succeed as a teacher that just already shows me your mindset you are wanting to be successful you are wanting to teach these kids you are wanting to make an impact so trust the process and in that process this is a tip within a tip you're welcome but find as many opportunities to grow so that you can develop within that process. Any professional development, sign up for it. Be the first one on that list. Impact these children. There's something that my coworker taught me. It's a list that I'm crappy at. <laughs> Write that down. Know your faults, okay? Know what you are not good at. That's okay. This is not popping your positivity. This is finding your truth. This is understanding what you need to grow in. This is trusting the process. Writing down all the stuff that you're not good at and watching you blossom and grow in these categories. Write down everything that confuses you. Write down everything that you're scared of. Write it down. See it in front of you. Write on a whole big old sheet of paper. Things I'm not good at. Big and bold. I'm not good at communicating with parents. I'm not good at saying no. I'm not good at classroom management. I'm not good at taking time for myself. I'm not good at organization. I'm not good at lesson planning. I'm not good at making this information fun. How the heck you make this fun? Write it down and then improve one thing every year. One thing every year. If you think you superwoman or superman, you can do two or three, go ahead. But you're gonna burn yourself out. One thing, improve on one thing every year. One thing you will blossom beautifully. If you focus on getting 1% better, 1% better, you will eventually be at 100%. I personally think that the first thing you need to focus on as a first year teacher is procedures, classroom management. Your procedures, get them procedures locked in, ready to go, which I will create a whole video for. And there's a book, I will link it below in the description box, is The First Days of School by Harry Wong. How to be an effective teacher. Boom, just in the title. All your answers in one look. But they basically talk about procedures. Perfect your procedures and you good. Tip six, be yourself. Do not pretend to be anyone else. Your kids will see right through it. They're like horses. You know how, you know how horses can smell your fear? Children can smell your inauthenticity, if that's even a word. Unauthenticity, non-authenticness. I don't know, but they can smell it. They know when you're not being you. Authenticity is key. Be yourself. No one is better at being you than you. Do you. If you got an ugly laugh like me, laugh. Laugh and let them kids hear you. And guess what? They'll love your laugh. Let my kids love my laugh. Tip seven, be prepared. And when I say be prepared, this goes back to your procedures. Make sure your procedures are ready for the first day of school. Before you even step foot into that classroom, be prepared. Know your standards. Take this time to print them out of your website, whatever state you live in, you got a website with them standards on it somewhere. Print them out, get to know them, break them down, understand them, create them lesson plans early. Get to know your school, be prepared. So that on that first day of school, when you have to walk your kids to the cafeteria, you actually know where it's at. On that first day of school, when you have to use the bathroom, you've got 26 kids staring at you, you know where to go. Be prepared for burnout. I, th I think that's very important. Create a schedule. This is the time I'm writing down that I'm gonna leave school and this is the time I'm gonna leave school. Create a schedule for prep time. This is the time that I'm cutting out to prepare. This is the time that I'm cutting out to grade. This is the time that I'm cutting out for me. This is the time that I'm leaving school and I'm gonna do it. Create a schedule from before you actually start teaching. So that way when you start going crazy saying you are gonna stay there till 10 p.m. guilty, that you remember that you told yourself that you are gonna leave at seven. So leave a second. Be prepared, be as prepared. Plan like your life depended on it. Have your substitute binder ready to go. Have your lesson plans ready to go. You know, be prepared. And when I say have your lesson plans ready, I don't mean for the whole year, I don't mean for the whole month. Try to have them prepared as early as possible, but still sticking to your schedule. Don't spend 50, 11 hours creating lesson plans. There's a quote, I love this quote. My dad tells me this all the time. By failing to prepare, you're preparing to fail. So be prepared. Make sure you're ready. Tip number eight, be flexible. You might have all these perfect plans planned exactly to the T of your agenda. You might think that you're gonna walk into school this day and start teaching at nine o'clock and end perfectly at 9.55. <laughs> That's if we don't have a fire drill. That's if there's not a behavior assembly. That's if little John John don't wanna wild out and show off in front of your class. That's if your technology is working. I said this in my distance learning tag 
which if you haven't seen that, I'll link the card up in the top. Be flexible. Do not complain if all of a sudden something has changed. They're asking you to do this. They're wanting you to switch up this. You displayed all of your stuff in a certain corner of your classroom and now they want you to put it all the way over here. Don't complain. Be flexible. Just do it. Just, 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 I'm telling you right now, you're going to win a lot of people's hearts if you're flexible and you don't complain. I remember when I came into school, my school I'm at now, which just kind of goes back to being prepared and, you know, getting to know your school, getting to know the procedures of your school. I made this huge hall, hall pass sign. It was beautiful. And I was going to hang my hall passes on it. Come to find out, we're a no-pass school. AKA, no matter how cute my hall passes look, they're not going to need one. Be gone, my beautiful hall pass board. So be, be flexible. I was a little bit sad, but you know, I'm like a rubber band. I bounce back. Tip nine, build relationships. And I do not just meet with students, which is very important. Build those relationships with those students. I will have a whole video on how you can do that because me and my relationships with my students, A1. I love my kids and they love me. We be TikToking during lunch. Those are my students. Not my friends, but my students. And we love each other. And we want to hang out. It's raining. Don't, don't mind the window pane. I also mean build relationships with your coworkers. Now, building a relationship with a coworker and finding your married goals are very different. Because you can build relationships with coworkers. You can show that you care. You can, you know, <laughs> get to know them about their life or whatever. But yeah, don't vent to them. Don't vent to everyone. Everyone does not need to know your problems, okay? This is where you're going to be spending a lot of your time. You want to know Sally down the hall. Hey, Miss Sally. Hey, Mr. Thompson. Hey. You have that smile on, you know, be positive. Show people that you are thriving. Even if you're not, your miracles can know. And they will be helping you, but you will be, you thrive. You thrive one day. And just, just act like it now. Smile. Wave. Pick your head up and make those relationships. Build relationships with the community. Be as involved as possible without burning yourself out and, you know, breaking your schedule. Being involved and being on the community are two different things. You being involved with the community, you getting to know your coworkers are gonna show your principal that you are invested in this school. If your admin sees you walking down the hall saying hi to as you walk by to people because you built those relationships, if they see your face at games, if they see your face at the Chipotle that they're holding their fundraiser night at, they're gonna remember you. Connect, build those relationships. But if you're going to build a relationship with anybody in that school, besides your marigold, three very important people that you need to get to know. Like yesterday. You need to get to know the custodian. Custodians multiple get to know them ask about their weekend don't just sit there in silence as they come in and clean your classroom speak to them you know develop a relationship your custodial staff is your equal don't think anything less you need that custodian because they will help you there's nothing worse than an emergency you need in something cleaned up you're needing extra paper towels you need something and the custodian is looking at you like I mean, it's their job, they're gonna get it to you. <laughs> but if you build that relationship, I'm telling you, you're gonna be a priority. Secrets, I'm telling you the secrets. Thank them. If they're leaving your room after cleaning it up and you're still there, please don't, please, please don't still be there. I mean, I was, so you know, heck. Not gonna lie, that's how I built most of my relationships with them because I was still there when they came in to clean my room. Make a schedule, just tell yourself when you're gonna leave. Yeah, thank them. If they leave your room and they took out your trash, thank them. They clean your room. I remember when my custodial staff waxed my floors for no reason at all. I was overjoyed. I bought them pizza. That's how happy I was because your girl loves shiny floors. So show your appreciation. Let them know that you are grateful. Second person, the sub coordinator. Get their number. Let them know. Help them out. Sub coordinators be stressed out. Think about it. Especially if you work in a middle school. If there's no subs, it's, it's like a puzzle. Like, I have six periods. One of them is planning. I'm on my planning period. The sub coordinator needs to find that out. Ask me if I want to sub in this person's position. Glue it all together and figure it out. And it's just a, it's just a mess. I can see the frustration. I, I would want to do it. So show them you're grateful, you know, help them out. Have a sub, a split list ready if you teach secondary school. Take the time to be one less problem for your sub coordinator. And the third is your secretaries. Yo, 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 secretaries will help you with everything you need. There has been multiple times I have ended up in the secretary's office boo-hoo crying. Boo-hoo. I remember I was in the clinic, 
it was during school like I left my first period because my coach who is the best coach ever because I built that relationship and we friends came up to my classroom right away when I told them I was freaking out I was freaking out I don't know what was wrong with me so I went down to the clinic I had one of my friends my marigold taking my blood pressure and then I had the principal secretary you know rubbing my back making sure I was fine those are I feel like those three positions are underappreciated they need to be appreciated man tip 10 reflect and move forward this is very important you need to reflect daily especially your first year of teaching daily like constantly reflecting like oh that did not go well how can I make this better these are the wise words of one of my marigolds she says reflect every night on everything that happened throughout the day everything start thinking back to the first thing in the morning how was your tone? Did you treat people fairly? Were you acting as a godly woman? Did you insult anyone? What can you do to be a better person tomorrow? And then she says, this usually makes me apologize to people the next day. That's exactly correct. Like reflect on how you treat people, how you were, I mean, even if you're having a bad day, sometimes you're having, you walk into school and you're having a bad day and you you project that on others and you don't, you don't even need to, you know? But reflect, have that time every night to, 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 to walk through your day and to say, hey, I kind of treated Susie wrong. Let me, let me make sure I apologize to her tomorrow. Especially if it's a kid, them kids will be shook when you show up to school the next day with an apology for how you acted towards them letting them know you was wrong they will love you they will respect you reflect on how the lesson plan went hmm. the whole class didn't understand i did something wrong remember that if the whole class is not understanding you doing something wrong reflect and then move forward reflect on what happened don't sulk and feel bad about the situation move forward remember that the next day thank the lord is a brand new day start fresh all the things that you did yesterday that you were not proud of today is a brand new day you can start it over and be a new person you can start it over and be a better teacher and just like it's a brand new day for you it's a brand new day for every student who walked into your classroom remember that if billy joe was upset made you off the wall crazy yesterday do not bring that up the next day do not throw that in his face do not make him feel bad because just like you wouldn't want Susie to make you feel bad for how you treated them yesterday because you had a bad day you wouldn't want to make Billy Joe or Billy Bob whatever I called him feeling bad because of how he acted yesterday maybe he had a bad day too just remember that reflect move forward start every day fresh tip number 11 take care of yourself don't overdo it stick to that schedule leave when you say you're going to leave self-care is important you need to make sure that you are filling your bucket before you come out here on these school grounds and think you are going to fill someone else's take care of yourself get your rest drink your water eat your vegetables or take a supplement like me because they're nasty find something that makes you happy other than being in the classroom and working with your kids if it's a pedicure go get yourself a pedicure if it's reading a book take time to read a book bubble bath take that bubble bath your kids will know when your bucket is empty you cannot pour out an empty bucket you cannot pour out to them if you are drained i'm telling you i've been there this year actually this year was not the year for me because my bucket was way drained all the way empty like there was probably holes at the bottom still draining with the no, the no with no space left at the bottom of the bucket that's how drained your girl was. So I'm telling you, don't do it. You're gonna feel burnt out. You're gonna start to lose your passion. And you know, my first year of teaching, I was like, never. That can never be me. Burn out, lose my passion? What is that? It happened, but I'm regaining it. I'm reflecting on everything that's happened, everything that, you know, went down this school year. Thinking to myself, what happened? Why did I enter the school year burnt out already? I was burnt out before day one. I had to take a sick day the first week of school why i figured it out and I, it's not gonna happen again it's okay to say no say no say no hey can you just no i can't do it i can't no can you no I, I, hey can you no I, I can't do it say no and guess who taught me how to do that my marigold my marigolds have taught me so much Say no. Think about it. That's a good, this is this is an okay way to do it too. You know, you don't have to just say no automatically and seem rude. Say, 
let me think about it. Go back to the schedule you've created because you know you have a planner, you're prepared, you're organized. Go back to that planner, see if it will fit into your time without you feeling drained. And say, hey, um, what's expected of me in this position? Oh, three hours a week. Can I do that? All right, sure. If I can't do that, it's okay to say no. Don't want nobody to make you say yes. Saying no because you know that it's gonna drain you because you're thinking about taking care of yourself is good. Don't let anyone make you feel bad for that. Something I can suggest, which I'll link below in the description box, is the 40 hour teacher work week. She teaches you time management skills, productivity, organizational skills, basically how to have a 40 hour teacher work week. I know it sounds impossible, but your girl is slowly getting to it. It's amazing. Link below. Tip number 12. We all Keep on checking with me. I hope you're still here. If you're still here, write in the comments below. I got this. You got your first year. Just keep on, keep watching. Tip number 12. Find an organizational system that works for you. Let me tell you something. I'm still trying to organize my life. If you organize yourself from day one, you have a higher chance of being organized for the rest of your teaching career. Mess is stress. When, I, when my classroom is all over the place, when my desk is all over the place, I am stressed out. I have all my kids coming up to my table. Mr. Bed, you should organize it. Do it for me. There's, there's a book called You're, You Should Never Work Harder Than Your Students. Read it. I'm going to link it below in, in, the, in the description box. Read it. So my, my kids love to organize my desk and I let them. But because of the 40 hour teacher work week, I have my organizational system ready for this upcoming school year. I'm ready, I'm ready. Find an organizational system, something, something. Even if it's something like bulky and not pretty, like get buckets and just throw things in there when you're done. Like, oh, lesson one is done, throw in this bucket. Start with something. Like even if you just have these random folders in your filing cabinet, put everything from that unit in one folder, put it at the back of the filing cabinet. You know, don't just have papers like me filed everywhere and then get confused on where things are supposed to go. Don't do that. Organization is one of my things I'm working on still. It's on my I'm not so great at list. Have a place for everything and put everything in its place and you will be set. Tip number 13, be humble and kind. In the very words of Kendrick Lamar, sit down. <laughs> no, but for real, sit down. You, you, you don't know it all. You do not want to be known as that cocky teacher who doesn't take advice. You do not want to be known as that cocky teacher who thinks that they know better than you. Because guess what? If you create that image, no one is going to want to help you. Not one person. They're going to watch you crash and burn and then laugh at you. Because you you said you knew what you were doing, right? You got this. You got this. You got this as in like, trust the process. You're growing. Ask for advice. But you don't got this. Like, I don't need your help. Got this. You need help. And because you're watching this video, I already know you know you need help. So you don't have to worry about this one. But just remember, once you start getting it together, to be humble and kind. Once you figure something out, share it with one of your new teacher friends. You know, because they're struggling too. Send them my video so they can watch it. Like the Bible says, right before the fall. Final tip. Tip number 14. Be consistent with everything. Be consistent with your procedures. Your classroom management. If you said you're going to do this, do this. And if you're not doing something anymore, explain to your kids and just poof, show up out of nowhere with a new system and they are so confused. Be consistent with, with you. Don't be like the teacher who, I don't know if I can approach them today because I don't know how they gonna act. Like, is she gonna yell at me? Or is she gonna embrace me and actually help me with my question? Be consistent. Your, your children need a place of consistency. If you are consistent in everything you do, they will feel safe in this environment. They will know what to do. Your procedures will flow because you're consistent. You do and expect the same thing every day. Your students will thank you. That's all my tips. But remember, this is your first year. You are starting from the beginning. Day one, you will make mistakes. You will mess up. You will forget to respond to a parent. You will be confused. You will jam the copy machine. Every teacher does it. Don't stress out. Stay calm, find your marigold, apply my tips, and you got this. You got this. You will make it through. Don't give up. Trust the process. I'm going to spit out all my tips right now. <clears throat> you got this. Thanks so much for watching. If you stayed until the end, I truly appreciate you. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and smash that like button. Subscribe so you can become part of the Eminem crew. I plan to make way more videos on how to be successful in the classroom, how to organize better, how to get to know your students, classroom tours so you can see how I do what I do when I do it. Most importantly, don't forget to spread some merry-go-magic today. I love you guys so much.